What's happening everybody? Steve Looney here from graphicdesignertips.com. I'm very excited to announce to you that this is the first episode of a brand new series I've been wanting to bring to you for a while and it's solely based on professional logo designs. These actual logos are logos that I have designed for clients of my own. So they have been through this whole entire refining process. I want to critique this logo real quick and then I'm going to get into Adobe Illustrator CC 2014 and then we're going to build it. But before I get into that, I just want to mention that each episode in this series will have an extended version of the episode as a part of a new course I've just launched. And this extended version is going to teach you all about the secrets of making money with logo designs. And some of these secrets really include the most important aspects, and that's dealing with the client. How do you correspond with the client? How do you price with the client? How do you handle changes and stuff like that with the client? So there's also a bonus video. There are downloadable vector files. And most importantly, showing you how I sent the initial drafts to my clients, as you can see on the screen, and revisions, revisions, revisions. Basically, how many times we went back and forth to make the client happy, and then the final branding package in the end. So you're gonna get the whole gamut of this project in this course, which you'll be able to find more on our website or in the video description link below. Sunrise Benefit Solutions is the name of this company. Now, this company is a healthcare provider, and basically what I try to do when I design is I try to make sure that something about the industry or the letters of the company are, are integrated in the logo somehow. And even if that's not the final version, that's part of the ideas that I do send them. But as the finalized idea that you're looking at on the screen, I just want to mention that the letters are S, B, and S. Since S are basically redundant, I am going to show you what happened in the end where basically the symbol is depicting two figures. So not male, not the female, just two figures. And the S is part of a handle that is holding an umbrella. Now, if you notice, the umbrella is the B for benefits that cuts out of a sun. So how cool is that? Uh, this has gone through a refining process. So basically, you got the sun for sunrise, a B cutting out of the sun, and a umbrella, an umbrella that is overhanging these people because umbrella is protection. And you know, you, there are umbrella policies in insurance, but it's just one of those things that it's uh, kind of iconic with it. And uh, anyway, Sunrise Benefit Solutions fonts. Okay, I used a Times New Roman, which has serifs on the end, and a sans serif, which is actually Jill or Gil Sans. And then for the tagline, I use Myriad Pro. I know I'm integrating three fonts when I normally, you don't want to go more than two, but this is a tagline that can be taken out. Now this logo will look good or great in black and white or as grayscale. Uh, it's not going to lose any details, which is really good. Um, Going back to color for a second, just to notice that there is gradients in here, but the gradients are so subtle, they go from very, you know, the blue to the subtly a little bit darker and vice versa with the yellows uh, to an orange. But there's not too drastic of a gradient, so you're not going to have to worry about printing issues with that. If you had to make these solid colors, it would still look great. This logo works out so great that we can actually take the symbol and move it on top of the logo and stack it and there'll still be a nice balanced logo that you shouldn't have a problem putting on certain types of things. And the symbol itself, it also works. You don't need the words necessarily because down the road you might just want to brand this symbol. You want people to recognize this symbol only as your brand. And that's when you know you basically have made it. When this symbol, I mean you can use this symbol as even uh, bullet points or, or you know as transparencies, uh, as transparent on top of, you know, ghosted on top of something. All different ideas you can do with that. Now let's get into Adobe Illustrator CC 2014 and build this logo. Right now I am working on an eight and a half by 11 document and I just want to point out that I pulled out the colors and I wrote the numbers of the colors on there so you could search through them and then add them to your swatches. So what you want to do is you want to come up in here into your color or your fill over here, basically the same thing. You want to double click, you want to enter that number and now hit OK. What you can now do is click and you can drag each one in. So we're going to do one, two, 
three, and this is just so we can access them easier later on. First thing we're gonna do is come up to our type tool and we're gonna just click right there. We're gonna type out the word sunrise and we're now gonna hit escape. And since I don't know the exact size, I'm just gonna let you know by, I'm gonna scale this up a little bit, move this down, okay. All right, so our sunrise uh, word is going to be say 18, 18 points and it's going to be Times New Roman. So what I now wanna do and you know what? I'm going to actually take this entire piece right here. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to go to object lock selection or command two. So I can actually lay this on top and we can kind of make sure that we're doing everything correctly. What I now want to do is I want to come into in my character and we'll co come into the tracking and I want to add some tracking. So I'm literally just on my magic mouse, just push, pushing up upwards and it's adding to it. So basically we added about 241 uh, in tracking to get to that point right there. What we now want to do is we want to create another text box. We're going to type out benefit solutions. We're going to hit escape and we're going to scale this down. When you pull this point in the middle, you want to hold shift and option. Okay. If you're new to my tutorials, you will notice that I talk a lot about every little thing. I actually go into details about why things are, or tools are being used um, specifically because that's the whole point. I like to go in depth with this stuff. Uh, we're going to come into character. We're going to take this right now and we're just going to uh, type out Gil Sans. All right. And that's the font that we're using for that. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to hover over this and I'm going to scale this up a little bit. Let's see the character. I still have 240 tracking on here. It works out perfectly because you never, ever, 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 ever want to be stretching type or, you know, doing this and that because it just looks unprofessional. And I guarantee you, um, once you train your eye, like when I look in a magazine or, you know, any advertisements, I always notice when stuff is stretched, especially like retail ads. It's always done a lot. Um, what you now want to do is you want to come up here to the line segment tool and we're literally just going to click on the, on top of this line. We're going to hold shift while we do it. Okay. If you have the extended version of this, uh, of this series, uh, if you're enrolled, you are, will be able to have the actual vector logo so you can play with everything on there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the stroke and I'm going to actually, I believe I'm going to put that to this one of these dark blues for now. I'm going to zoom in, all right? Let's see. Okay, so this stroke is way too thick. We're going to take that stroke down to a half a point, and we're just going to put it right on top. Okay, so now we have it on top. What we now want to do is we want to copy it down. We want to go to Option, hold Option on your computer, click, hold the Shift, and then you're just going to pull it down to right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the same two elements down right here. We're going to select both of them, we're not going to select sunrise, so we're going to actually click the uh, sunrise. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to select all three of these, and then we're going to hold shift and click that off. Cool? Another way of doing things. We're now going to hold option, click, shift, and we're going to hold shift while we, while we shift it down. Move it right down here. A little bit more. Zoom out. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type out we deliver. All right, I'm going to just make that small for now. The, the O on of, I put lowercase. Because while everything else is title case, meaning the first letter is capital, words like of, and you know, short words and words like the it sometimes don't look right. The in this case does work. So let's see, we deliver the space. How many spaces are there? One. Oh, we're now going to hit escape. We're now going to come into our character. We're going to take that tracking off. We're going to put it to zero. We're going to come into Myriad Pro, Italic, and we're going to come up into here and make that about, let's say, 75% black. Nope. It's about 80. Okay. Come over here. Just gonna scale this up a little bit. And don't forget 
do end quotes like I just did. We're gonna hit escape every time you're done with the text box. You always want to hit escape to end what you're doing on there. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to pull it down. Cool, right? All right. Now what we want to do is we want to create this actual symbol on the logo. All right. So the very first thing we want to do with the symbol is get these two figures uh, as a actual shape in here. So what we can do, we can do this a number of ways. But the way that I'm going to do it is I'm basically going to make a rectangle. OK. And I'm going to hit the plus sign on my keyboard, which is going to add an actual anchor point when I click on a line segment. So we're going to click right in the middle right here. We're going to hit A on our keyboard and we're going to pull this up just a little bit. OK, and now we're going to hit shift C or the convert anchor tool point, And we're going to hold shift as we move this with our arrow. OK. What we're now going to do is we're going to take this point. We're going to hold shift. Now we're going to take this point and we're just going to hit the down arrow about two times, three times, so four times. Nope, three times. OK, it might be different on your end, depending on how zoomed in you are on your canvas. And what we're now going to do is we're going to take the ellipse tool and we're going to hold shift while we make this ellipse on top of here. I'm just going to make that right on top. To make sure these are aligned in the center point, you want to hold shift while clicking both of these and then click this right here, horizontal align center tool. We're just going to shift it over a little bit. And now what we're going to do is if we're happy with our shape, we are going to finalize it by going to our pathfinder shape modes, top left, unite. And we're going to click that. And now we have our shape. We're going to hit E on our keyboard to transform. And we're going to hold shift and option when we're scaling down. And I'm just going to lay it over the old one. And it's actually very similar. It's off a little bit. But that's fine. We're now going to go option click, shift it over. We're basically copying it. OK, now let me keep, teach you a quick trick because I actually didn't hit hold option at the right point. So it just moved that other one. We're going to hold. We're going to command C. OK. We're going to back up. All right. If you watch this tutorial just for this trick, you're you you could, you know, you could turn this off and you'll be, you know, have learned more than you could have in a while. And I know this is so stupid and simple, but now that we backed up, we got our shape back here. What you're going to go to do is go to edit paste in front, because remember, I copied this before. I know that sounds strange, but there's a lot of times where I will like something I did. And so it's like I have to undo so many things to get back to it. So what I'll do is I'll copy what I have on the canvas now. I'll undo and go back 20, 30 steps to something I, I, I had if I didn't copy it at that point. And then I will copy the one that was 20 steps ahead. So you always have that extra version to use. So what I want to do in here is I don't like what's going on. You see how it's kind of hard edge right there. I want to click hit uh, shift C again, converting point tool. And I'm just going to pull these out just a little bit. It's going to totally smooth these out. All right. Same thing with this. One. Two. Again, if I pull that off, you're going to see it's a lot smoother than it was. All right. So I'm going to pull this down for now. All right. The very next thing we are going to do is we are going to actually create this shape right here. All right, what you want to do is you want to click the pencil and we're just going to outline the middle of this shape. All right. So we get it to where we want it to be. Remember, we still got to make it look like an S because that was the whole point of this shape. We're now going to go like this. Okay. I'm now going to come into here. I'm going to take the fill to none and I'm going to hit A on my keyboard so I can mess around with my points a little bit until I'm happy with them. All right. Actually, very happy with everything. Uh, what we're now going to do is we're going to take our stroke and we're just going to turn it black for now. And I'm going to, let's see, really quick. Okay. I'm going to come into here in, into my end cap and I'm going to make that a round cap right there. I'm going to hit Shift C again, like I did earlier. We're going to smooth that out right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make that a little bit thicker. Let's do two points is way too much. We'll actually manually type in 
see what we get. Okay, cool. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to, I'm not going to do that because then it's going to make that loud, annoying sound is I'm going to go to option click and I'm going to shift this down a little bit. Okay. I am now going to hit copy command C and I'm going to go to command B. So I paste it right in back of itself. What I now want to do is I want to take that stroke. I want to turn it white because our background canvas is white and I'm going to increase the weight of the stroke. Now you can't see that because it's not truly, it, it, it's actually in the back back of everything. So what you want to do is you want to take this shape, hold shift, take this shape, go object arrange, send to back, and then that white stroke is going to appear. So basically you have that black and then you have that white right on top of it. Okay. I'm going to back up. I'm going to take this element. I'm going to command to lock it. Take this command to lock it. What you now want to do is you want to do two things. We're going to select both of these. We're going to make sure there's a lock. Select both of these. We're going to go to object path outline stroke. Okay. I'll tell you why I'm doing this in one second. Actually, that second is now. I'm going to take this top element. I'm going to hit command two. All right. The reason you do this is because now you need to refine this when it's all done at the end. So you need to make sure that this shape isn't full behind it. You need to knock it out using the pathfinder. So I'm going to take this shape right here. I'm going to hit command two to lock it. I am now going to hover over both of these shapes. So you're going to have this shape here. And then you're going to have the figure in the back. We're going to come to Pathfinder minus front. All right. So now what I just did was I created one, two shapes because it, it subtracted that all that white. So basically, all I have over here now is the is the little handle and then these elements right here. That big white area basically disappeared. It cut it out. So Pathfinder is awesome for refining logos in the end. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to the ellipse tool and very simply, I'm just going to kind of hover over what we did last time. So I got pretty much the same shape. And I definitely messed with the points at one point. It's not a perfect circle. And what you want to do is just going to move. Actually, you know what? We're going to take this and we're going to fill it with none. Uh, what we're now going to do is we're going to make another ellipse that is going to cut out of here but this one's going to be more like an oval and we're going to hit e on our keyboard and we're going to just kind of get this and stretch it to where it gets fills that shape because we're basically going to cut it out of that background area okay so we're going to do one here is the second b I know I mess. I remember. I recall now. I messed with this for a little while because I I still wanted it to look like a B. I was popping out of it. I didn't want it to look too cheesy. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna while we have this selected, you know, just for visual purposes, we're gonna fill it with this blue. I'm gonna take this one. Oh, you know what I did? I screwed this up, sort of. But we can copy this and we can back up just like I was talking about before. We're going to do that other one right there and we're going to hit command F. So now we have that. And there is our other circle right there. We fill that with blue. We're going to hold shift. We're going to select both of these. That looks like a minion, doesn't it? Right? They have, yeah, it does look like a minion. I don't know. It's very late right now. I, I, I could be going crazy. I'm going to take the shape modes. I'm going to hit unite. So now I have this shape right here. I am now going to take that circle that I made earlier and these shapes, I'm going to pull them over here. Okay. Turn this black for now so you can see what's happening. I'm now going to take these again. I'm going to minus front. Okay. But you know what? I got this area. It's still connected. So I'm going to pull this. I need this to go off the edge. You'll see why in a second. When I do this again, I do a minus front. Now it allows me to get rid of that piece right there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the area that is that orange right there. And it's actually very simple to do. What we're going to do is we're going to go to option click and we're going to shift this down as a copy. 
and we're going to do it again option click and we're going to shift it out just like this okay and we're now going to select both of these again minus the front and boom now we have that but we have some extras so we're going to a on our keyboard close out that and we're going to hit the minus sign on our keyboard to subtract this point right here and we're just going to hit a on our keyboard we're going to pull this in a little bit okay, so we can refine that what we're now going to do is we're going to pull this back right up into that space right there we're going to come into our swat uh, well actually you know what that's next we're going to put this right on top looks very similar doesn't it okay so now what we're going to do is we're basically just going to add some color and what you also want to do is you want to hit command on your keyboards pull a ruler down and make sure that the bottom of your logo lines up with the bottom of this uh, it does work in this case although the tops are not uh, they're not lined up but it's good because you don't want the symbol to be that small what you now want to do is you want to come into here first we're going to add this orange in here and we're going to come into here in the blues we're going to hold shift while we do that we're now going to come into our gradient we're just going to pull this gradient in here which is obviously off it's wrong we're going to pull the blue and then the lighter blue we're going to put them at different sides of the gradient scale all right and we're going to change that from radio to linear and we're going to take this gradient we're just going to pull this up right here we're going to pull up a little bit lower cool all right the very next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to fill this with that same orange. All right. And we are going to come into here and we're going to fill this with another gradient. And I know that gradient is going to have this gold. Let's see. Is it going to have this orange? Is that what we're going to do? Let's see if we're going to do that. Um, I just changed it to radial. So I'm just doing it as I'm talking. Let's see how, how it goes. All right, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, options you can do with that. So that is probably good enough right there. Let me see. Is that a lighter yellow? Actually, it's the orange right there. It only looks strange because it's a little bit thicker than the original in my mind. Um, what I want to do is I want to take all this right now and I want to go to type create outlines so I'm able to put actual color in here or gradient color I'm going to select sunrise I'm going to hit the eye for my eyedropper I'm going to select this blue right here and then I'm going to mess around with the gradient okay we're now going to take benefit solutions and we're going to mess around hold I or the eyedropper with this I'm going to make it linear and I am going to pull this up let's see what we got there and that's basically it what we want to do is we want to pull this a little bit so it's very near the edge and it pretty much lines up it's it's hard to line up text because you can't really go to the edge of this e you have to kind of break halfway within because that's the the weight of the of the actual letter um you know and then also the s it actually flares out a little bit on the angle so you can't get to the very last pixel but you got to visually do this you know by eye to say all right this is definitely off or this is definitely not off all right so that about wraps up this first episode of the professional logo design tutorial series let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video and what you learned and if you just want to say hi you can say hi in there too please share it out on your social networks if you like this video and you learn something from it i'm sure that somebody else can find value from it too so please help me get the word out there and share it out and hit the subscribe button don't forget to subscribe to the channel because youtube makes it very hard to know when somebody comes out with a new video unless you're subscribed to the channel so that's definitely a plus right there and uh don't forget about the extended version check it out um there's just so many things i mean it's it, there's more than just building a logo there's always all these extra things that are involved that you know are going to either help you land the job or help you not land the job so i want to steer you in the right direction so you guys can make some really good money um doing what you love 
So I will see you for the next episode of the Professional Logo Design. Everybody have a great night. Peace.